of the video. In this video, I'm going to talk about the superficial muscles of the thorax and the back, and I'm also going to cover the muscles of the shoulder girdle. So to start, um, the first one is the superficial muscles of the thorax. I'm going to first talk about the pectoralis major, and then right behind it, you will see musculus pectoralis minor. And I'm also going to talk about musculus subclavicularis and musculus serratus anterior. So the musculus pectoralis major consists of three parts corresponding to where they originate. For instance, pars clavicularis originates at the clavicula, pars sternocostalis originates at the uh, sternum, and the cartilage of the uh, ribs number two to four, and pars abdominalis, which originates at the abdominal muscle called musculus recti abdominalis. They have common insertion point, which is the crest of the uh, tubercle major of the humerus. And when this muscle contracts, it pulls the arm towards the midline, as you see in this picture. Uh, and it's also going to rotate the arm internally. And it also, the, the upper part of the, this muscle, pars clavicularis, uh, flexes the arm, as you see in this picture. Um, when you bench press or cable crunch the uh, the uh, muscles, the uh, chest muscle, you will be flexing the pars clavicularis of the pectoral muscle. And so the next one is musculus pectoralis minor, as you see here. It er originates at the external surface of the second to fifth rib and inserts at the processus curacoideus of the scapula. And the function of this is to pull the shoulder down and forward, as you see in this arrow here. So now the next one is musculus subclavicularis. It is located underneath the uh, clavicula. It originates at the upper surface of the first rib and inserts at the lower surface of the clavicula. And the function of this is to elevate the first rib and pull the clavicula down. It also holds the clavicula and the first rib together. So now the next one is musculus serratus anterior. Uh, it originates it originates at the medial margin of the scapula and angulus inferior of the scapula. It goes under the scapula on the external surface and sits there. Alright, and it inserts at the ribs number one to nine. And when this muscle contracts, it rotates the scapula. It rotates the scapula anteriorly, as you see in this arrow, and that movement lifts your arm upwards. So this muscle is mostly expressed when you lift your arm, just like this figure. That's going to be your musculus serratus anterior. So now we're going to cover the superficial muscles of the back. The superficial the the superficial muscles of the back has three different layers. The first layer consists of musculus trapezius and musculus latissimus dorsi. And then the next layer is going to be musculus rhomboideus major and minor. And also musculus levator scapular. And then the third layer is going to be musculus serratus posterior superior and musculus serratus posterior inferior. So now as we go over to musculus trapezius, uh, it has three different origin points. Uh, one is at the uh, occipital bone and then it fuses with the ligament, uh, ligamentum nuchae of the cervical vertebrae and sits on the spinous process of the thoracical vertebrae T1 to T12. And it has three different insertion points. It inserts at the spina uh, scapula, as you see here, and on the front you will see that it inserts at the clavicula and the acromion. And it has different functions. The upper part lifts the shoulder up, and the middle part uh, pulls the scapula towards the vertebral column, and the lower part pulls the shoulder down. So the next muscle is musculus latissimus, as you see in this picture. Uh, musculus latissimus can also have different origin points. So the first one is crista iliaca down here, 
and then the fascia tora columbaris, which is the white um, fascia in this picture, and also uh, sits on the spinous process of the T8 and T9, and also gonna touch the angulus uh, inferior of the scapula, and it inserts at the minor tubercle crest of the humerus. And when this muscle contracts, it gonna pull the arm towards the midline, as you see in this arrow, and also gonna rotate the arm ex uh, internally, and also pull the arm backwards. This muscle is mostly expressed when you turn or you when you um, turn your arms uh, to the front. You will see them clearly here. On the daily use, this uh, this muscle is called lats. So now on the next layer, um, we're gonna talk about the next layer. Uh, the first muscle is musculus rhomboideus. Musculus rhomboideus has uh, a major part and a mi minor part, as you see in this picture. Uh, it has common in common insertion points, which is margo medialis scapula, as you see in this picture, and has common function as well. It pulls the scapula towards the vertebral column and upwards, as you see in this arrow. Um, but the major um, musculus rhomboideus is going to originate at the spinous process of T1 to T4, and the minor is going to fuse with ligamentum nuchae and also originate uh, at the spinous process of cervical vertebrae C6 and C7 and meet the major at T1. And the next one of the second layer is going to be musculus levator scapula. Uh, it originates at the transverse process of C1 to C4 and inserts at angulus superior. And its function is to elevate the scapula as you see in this arrow. Now that we have covered the second layer, we're going to go over to the third layer, which is going to be the musculus serratus posterior superior and the inferior. So if you start with the superior, uh, it originates at the spinous process of the C6 and C7, and at T1 and T2. And since there are four origin points, it's going to have four insertion points as well, which is ribs 2 to 5. And its function is to elevate the ribs and aid the inhaling. And the next one is gonna be the quite opposite. It originates at the spinous process T11, 12 and L1, L2 and sit on ribs 9 to 12. And this function is gonna pull the ribs downwards which aids exhaling. So now we go over to muscles of the shoulder girdle. I'm first gonna talk about the musculus deltoideus and then the supraspinous uh, musculus supraspinosum and musculus infraspinosum and then I'm going to talk about the teres major and teres minor it is teres major and teres minor I'm also going to talk about the musculus subscapularis as you see in this picture so the first one musculus deltoideus it has also three parts I have uh, colored them according to this picture here um, their names correspond to their origin points as well, pars clavicularis sits on the clavicula, pars acromialis sits on the acromialis, and the pars uh, spinalis sits on the spinous part of the scapula, uh, scapula. They have common insertion point as well, which is the deltoid tubercle on the humerus. And the movement here corresponds to this picture. For instance, pars acromialis, if only the green part would, would um, contract, it would pull, uh, pull the arm to the side, it would abduct the, upper, uh, the arm, and if only clavicular part uh, contracts, it would pull the arm, um, or it would rotate the arm internally, and if the pars spinalis would contract, it would rotate the arm externally. And now if the spinal part and the clavicular part would contract at the same time, it would adduct the arm, meaning it would pull it towards the midline. And if the acromial part and clavicular part would contract at the same time, it would flex the arm, 
pu uh, pushing it um, this way in the front and then the opposite if the pars acromialis and spinalis would contract it would pull the arm to the back side now the next muscle is musculus supraspinosum musculus supraspinosum covers the fossa supraspinata as you see here and it inserts all the way at the tuberculum major and if this muscle would uh, contract it would pull on the upper part of the humerus, abducting the arm, pushing it to the side. And the next muscle is musculus infraspinosum, which covers the fossa infraspinata, and this muscle uh, inserts at tuberculum major on the back side. And this muscle, if this muscle would uh, contract, it would rotate the arm externally this way. So now the next one is musculus teres major. Musculus teres major inserts at angulus inferior, uh, so originates at angulus inferior uh, and inserts at the crest of the uh, minor tubercle on the other side of this picture. Um, here the humerus is transparent to show you where, where it inserts. So the function of this uh, muscle would be adduction, pull the arm to the midline, and also pull the arm backwards, and also rotate it internally. So the next one is musculus teres minor. Musculus teres minor originates at margo lateralis and inserts at the major tubercle. And if this muscle would contract, it would rotate the arm uh, externally and also pull the arm backwards. And now the last muscle is musculus subscapularis, it's on the front side here. It originates at the fossa subscapularis and inserts at the tuberculum minor and its crest. And if this muscle would uh, contract, it would rotate the arm internally and adduct the arm, meaning pull it to, push it, uh, pull it to the midline. And that was all the muscles for this video and I hope it was helpful.